to another episode of Curtain Call Conversations. I'm here today with Zina Goldie, who will be starring in a new play, Vitamin D, at Soho Theatre from the 3rd to the 21st of September. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. It's Zina. Just oh, Zina, I do apologise. I do apologise. <laughs> How are you? How's the show uh, rehearsal going so far for you? I'm well, thank you. I um, hope you're well too. Um, the, re- the rehearsals are so much fun. Um, speeding along, we're getting a lot done. We're unfolding more things from their characters and the storyline each day. So yeah, it's been a lovely process so far. Fabulous. So as I said, this play is called Vitamin D and you play Auntie in the play. Um, so tell us all about the story and, and sort of who your character is. Um, essentially, it's about um, a character called Lurki, who is a young girl who's newly divorced and returns back home to the family home. Um, and the play explores her relationship with the different female characters in her life and her community and society and how the stigma of divorce is received by all these different people, how it's projected onto her and how she handles these psychologically, emotionally. Um, as she straddles the two worlds because she's a British Asian young lady. It's straddling these two worlds of her own livelihood, her own childhood, coupled with the religion and um, society's values and what's projected onto her and expectations of how she's meant to behave. Sure. I mean, obviously, you know, it's not my culture, so I, I'd love to be sort of taught about what, what the culture, what the stigma is with divorce. I mean, what what, what is the culture's opinion of it? Um, I think, you know, in South Asian um, backgrounds generally, so that covers, you know, Islam, Hinduism, Sikhism, um, there are lots of similarities. And generally it's frowned upon to to be, you know, a divorced young lady because the ideal is, you know, happily married, 2.4 children. Yeah. So if a divorce, as is inevitable, happens, um, it's either hushed away or not talked about so much, but obviously it's a part of life. So this play explores what happens if somebody does speak up, speaks for their rights and how everybody else handles it. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's getting more of a positive response within the community as people mm-hmm. get used to, this is a part of life and this happens, but mm-hmm. this play explores other people's attitudes towards it. Sure. Okay. And, and as the auntie, what, what are her views to it? Um, so auntie, again, is an interesting character because she straddles both worlds, again, being a British okay. one over here. So she's not the traditional auntie as, as people might see. So that will be quite interesting to share with the audience. Um, yeah. So she kind of she straddles both worlds. She's kind of what I like to call a CEO of people. She okay. makes it her business to know everybody okay. else's business. Okay. She sees, sees herself as a bit of a saviour. Um, okay. So if she sees somebody else's, um, you know, family situation gone wrong, she feels it's her right to help them sort it out and get society back on track again and, you yeah. know, happy endings for everybody and she takes it upon herself to involve herself in the community and, and sort things out and get things done. Yeah, I think we all know somebody like that, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely in life. Um, so as you say, the rehearsals are going really well. What, what's the process like for you? Do you enjoy sort of the creation of a new show and, and there's certainly a character for yourself? Do you enjoy that process? Oh, I'm enjoying it immensely, yes. I think, um, obviously, we all had the script, so we ha- had an idea of the characters we were playing, but it's until the group comes together. Um, and every there are six female characters um in this play and everybody's so different and brings such different energy in terms of their individual personalities and the characters they play. Uh, So unfolding that together, which couldn't really happen obviously until today one uh, and watching that and like every day, something else is unearthed, something new, something juicy we can add into the plot or something might take a complete u-turn or we might get rid of something so it's yeah. really playing we really are playing with the bare bones of the story adding our own personalities in. we've got brilliant direction from Melina Nanda um, and the assistant director as well Tash um, so we're getting their input because they've got this wealth of you know an amazing body of work behind them so just the little tweaks they're adding as well or the redirection or just things we're unearthing through the process has just been yeah it's been like gold dust actually 
Yeah, oh, it sounds brilliant. So when you get to the theatre to sort of have your first show, I mean, obviously, you know, you've, you've acted in, in previous things as well. So how's the feeling for you sort of getting on the stage and doing the show for the very first time to an audience? How do you feel? You know, it's it's a double-edged sword because you're nervous. That yeah. doesn't yeah. actually go away. It's always yeah. there. But I think if you've done the prep and you're, you're happy with the show and... um exciting you're excited to perform to tell the story and actually with this story more than any work I've done previously this is resonating more we've all said that within the cast okay. that we don't get enough stories like these of South Asian British okay. British Asian women yeah. uh, so to tell a story like this collectively is just so exciting and literally every day you asked about the rehearsal process every single day I've thought there's nowhere else I'd rather be than here right now creating this I'm excited for the journey that lies ahead for the remainder of rehearsals but I mean excited to share the story because yeah. no matter what background you're from or what age you're from or what your knowledge is or isn't of South Asian history you'll learn something yeah. you'll resonate with the characters on a human level of just a young girl going through a divorce mm. dealing that or female you know the matriarchy or other female relatives friends so I think everybody will resonate on some level or learn something about the the culture um and yeah and just what it's like to be a British Asian and, and navigating through through the minefield of divorce and beyond yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds wonderful. So let's talk about you and sort of your career. Where did the performing side come from and, and why why did you choose it as a career? Do you know, it's always been there. I've always been an avid watcher of TV, films. Okay. But, um, again, actually going back to the culture, it wasn't something I ever thought would be a career for me. I kind of went down the traditional route of, you know, um, going to university, doing business and finding a career. I worked in the corporate world for many years, raised a family. And then it's only being sort of the other age when my children are, you know, young adults now that I thought, actually, what, what do I want for me for the rest of my life? And I kept veering back towards creative <laughs> creative right. industries um so I've dipped in and out of being a makeup artist as well oh, and wow. so I realized being on set actually it was being on set that I liked not the makeup I mean I love the makeup but <laughs> that was more of the pool I found myself wanting to work in media environments more and more and I, and then it was um my son actually that said we were actually in LA on holiday doing a studio tour as you oh, do. Wow. <laughs> um, and he said mom you should be an actor and I think it was the it shouldn't be this way it was the validation from my own son saying you should do this because obviously he would know me and he, him saying something like that made me think do you know what actually I, I'll explore that so oh, wow. um I started straight in at the deep end with a, um, a course at Lambda, um, okay. doing classical training, which was immense fun, but then showed me how much there was to learn. So I've been doing yeah. it since then. I've been to Kingdom um, Drama School. So it's an ongoing thing. And that's what I've learned from established actors, that you never stop learning. So I'm still enjoying that journey and, yeah, just finding my way through theatre and, and beyond, really. Yeah, sure. I mean, have you got sort of any aspirations as to what sort of, um, sort of field you'd like to go into sort of what genre is it just generally plays that you do or you sort of musical um, I've, done, I've done some short films as well I've got a okay. small in an upcoming feature with an independent British director so I mean screen and and stage to be honest I, I'm loving stage what I've learned from this process with vitamin D because of the nature of the story mm. is I'd love to tell more stories of this ilk okay. i.e from South Asian backgrounds just because they're you know we all know South Asian people and it, yeah. there are so many stereotypes that we seem to think you know it's the shopkeeper or maybe the doctor or whatever but actually we all know it's Asian people that yeah. speak like me, have been to university, yeah. could be quite wealthy, you know, just live as we do. So I'd like to tell more, there are, there's not enough representation of those kind of people. So yeah. I'd love to do some more storytelling where it's just a normal Asian sure. doing a normal thing, just, you yeah. know, just as perhaps friends that you have. Um, yeah. So those kind of stories. So if it's theatre, I'd love to do that. Screen, do you know what? I find it also exciting. I'd yeah. love to do my ultimate, I mean, we're going to go there. I'd love to be a villainess in a Bond film. <laughs> Would you? Wow. <laughs> Evil and psychotic. That would be quite fun. Yeah. Um, but, but I love the US shows. You know, I've always been a huge fan of all the, all, 
well, Grey's Anatomy, okay. the cop shows, just anything. So even soap operas, I love EastEnders. Again, to be honest, I think it's the South Asian family that's in there. Yeah. It's just representation. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's it's exciting to me. So yeah, yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is so important, isn't it? That you know, that different cultures, and we get that sort of overview of you know the wonderful world that we do live in and there's a lot of stories yeah. to be told as you as you say um so this particular show um what i mean what would you say that an audience m might sort of take from it um overall sort of once they've heard the whole story um i think two things i think first of all south asian people are you know with especially with everything that's gone on recently in the world um south asian people are normal quite mm. frankly mm. it's actually a, a story of a young girl who got divorced yeah actually yeah. but because of all the the relationships within that we then explore her relationships with her best friend with her mother with her, with aunts with yeah. other people in the wider community so essentially it's just a, um you know a, a bird's eye into somebody's life or how does a young girl navigate divorce sure. um secondly it'll be educational on some levels because um people will learn maybe a bit about the culture about preconceptions they might have mm. uh, and just the dynamics of female relationships because that chops and changes you know we're a different person to different people i'm a different person with my mother i'm a different person with my sister i'm a different person with my best friend so it's explore, exploring those dynamics as well so i think it's essentially just a story of a woman getting divorced and yeah. female relationships yeah absolutely and is it sort of a, a whole um female cast and creative team as well Yes, female cast and creative team, um, mostly women of colour as well. So, yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. And that it's energy is really exciting as well. Just I've never worked with a completely female team, so that's really lovely too. Yeah, I, I would I would imagine that that's probably the most important bit of the play, that it is purely a female-led show. And I think it lends to the authenticity as well, because we're all very different as well. We've all had different experiences. And so we each bring that a part of ourselves to the character as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's sort of, so you mentioned a little bit earlier there that, you know, this this career is, I'm not going to say new, sort of relatively new. You've done other things sort of in your past. So how, how do you sort of deal with the audition process? I mean, I always love to ask this question because it's so fascinating that, you know, some people revel in it, some people just get really excited, some people dread, not dread it, but, you know, have the fear. So how do you feel about sort of auditioning and how do you prepare? It's very mixed. So when I worked in the corporate world, I used to love interviews. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One get the job out you go so I used to so I think some of that maybe that was the performer in me I don't know yeah. um, I, I quite I mean I quite enjoy I, we see it as play I enjoy the process of auditioning because yeah. it's an opportunity to play you're given some lines you might have a day to learn them you might have a couple of days to learn them you might have to do self-tape self-taping is um, a really popular way of um, auditioning now so I enjoy the challenge because you just you just don't know what you're going to get you're yeah. going to get a different character and everything varies from one character to the next so I enjoy the challenge of trying to fit into this different character um where I've had recalls then I have got nervous because I think if I've got one audition there was one I went for a recall and the audition had gone great really great one-on-one -on -one with this person and then went went in for the recall got really excited and then I walked in the door there were six people there and I was like oh okay and then my, my heart a little bit thought, okay so I think each experience teaches you a little more of how prepared you need to be but essentially I think I try and go in and just play um like the audition for this it was lovely it was I just okay. went in had the um the writer uh the producer and the director three lovely women we had a lovely chat and you know I think it, it added to the to the vibe of the audition and yeah. and so it was just a joyous experience and we just played we just played with the lines said, let's try this let's try that and so I left feeling really happy thinking you know even if I don't get this job I've just met three really lovely women today yeah. so yeah it's a nice time yeah exactly <laughs> and, and how are you with sort of learning your lines I mean do you have a process behind how you learn them is it just repetition do you have somebody sort of at home that you can sort of work with yeah, I think going back to Lambda, that's when I learned, okay, there needs to be a process because I, I was not good at learning lines then oh. right in the beginning. But I think your failures build you because mm. you don't 
in that place again you think actually that's how that feels I didn't like that how that feel how can I rectify that for next time yeah. and so um I think it was good that I wasn't good at learning lines back then right. now again I love it I I am um, how do I learn it I, a line at a time I can't obviously skim through the script read the relevant bits when it comes to actual line learning I will just learn a line at a time highlight the line and then learn the next line highlight it and then go through and I just repeat them systematically until I've got them all in and they seem to go quite quickly and I was really pleased to hear that Judy Dench does the same thing so oh, I think yeah. I'm <laughs> you're in very good company there then yeah absolutely and so I'm going to wish you all the best with this show it sounds wonderful and I think people really should come and visit um just to you know to, to get the story and to, to understand that as you've said you know South Asian people are just normal people and go through normal things like the rest of us so it sounds wonderful at the Soho Theatre um, I'll pop on the next slide where people can get their tickets from but I hope you and the rest of the cast and the crew have a lovely time thank you thank you for having me you're more than welcome take care yeah bye hey bye bye